Hey, what's going on guys? It's Nirav here from Tab Times, and in front of us is the iPhone 7. If you're one of the millions of people who've bought the iPhone 7 or the iPhone 7 Plus, you may have a few questions on just how to set up or insert a SIM card in your new handset. Well, stay tuned as we've got everything you need to know. So when you turn your iPhone 7 or 7 Plus on for the first time, you're gonna be treated by Apple's traditional welcome screen. Unlike previous years where you swipe to access the language list, this time you just press the home button and it brings up the list of languages. Obviously, as you can see, the first thing it's gonna say is you've not got a SIM card installed and you need a SIM card in order to activate the iPhone. So before we go ahead with the setup, let's show you how to insert a SIM quickly. So to insert a SIM card, you're gonna need the SIM removal tool that you'll find in the box. Take that, take your iPhone, and on the right here, you may not be able to see it, you'll find a little hole. Pop it in there and out pops the SIM tray. Pull that out and you've now got the SIM card tray. So to insert a SIM card, make sure you take a nano SIM and put, the, put it in like so with the, with the cut corner here facing upwards. Once you've done that, it's just time to put it back into the phone. To do so, take the SIM card tray and pop it in the hole. Push in and you've now got a SIM card in your iPhone and the message goes away. Now that you've done that, let's go and select a language. In this case, we're going to select English, but you can select whichever one. We're here in Sydney, Australia, so it's going to default to Australia, but you can choose any country. In this case, let's go select the United States. Tap that. So the next step is to choose a Wi-Fi network, and if you haven't got an activated SIM card, you won't be able to use cellular connection to activate your iPhone. So just find your Wi-Fi network in the list, Tap on it and it'll ask you to enter the password. It may take a little while to connect to your Wi-Fi network, but once done, it will take you to the screen and it will start to activate your iPhone. This can take a few minutes, it can take a few seconds, it all depends on how fast your Wi-Fi network is and how fast Apple servers are. Once activated, it asks you to enable or disable location services. You may think to leave this off, but if you want to use Apple Maps services, any of the location services in the widgets, like the weather, etc., you'll need to enable this. Once you've enabled location services, it will ask you about Touch ID. Now, Touch ID is Apple's fingerprint sensor built into the home button, and if you want to use that for security, or even if you want to use Apple Pay for payments, you'll need to enable it. So to do so, let's press continue, and then press and remove your finger repeatedly from the home button like so. Once you've done the initial one, it's gonna ask you to adjust your grip so it can capture the edges of your thumbprint. Now you can choose any finger. In this case, I've chosen my left thumb. Press continue again, and Touch ID is enabled. Now it's gonna ask you about a passcode. So you have the choice by default, it now asks you for a six digit passcode, but under passcode options, you have the choice of a custom alphanumeric code, custom numeric code, or a four digit code as well, whichever one you prefer. As a word of warning, if you have enabled Touch ID, you cannot continue without entering a passcode. In this case, let's choose a four digit, but may, many of you may choose six by default. And you can choose any combination that you like, but if you choose something that is, say, very common, such as 0000, it's gonna prompt up and say, are you sure you wanna use this code? Essentially, that's a warning that you're using a code that's probably very easy to guess. Let's continue anyway, and now it'll ask you to reconfirm the code. Once done so, it enables the passcode and Touch ID. Next up, you have the choice of apps and data. Now, if you've had an iPhone before, you're probably gonna wanna restore from your iCloud backup or your iTunes backup, which essentially lets you bring all the data across. If you've not had one, you can either set up as a new iPhone or move your data across from Android. Let's go through each step. First, to restore from an iCloud backup, it's gonna ask you to sign in with your Apple ID and password. Do so, and it's then gonna give you a list of the most recent iCloud backups, and you can follow the on-screen instructions. Let's go back. To restore from an iTunes backup, tap that, and it's gonna now ask you to connect to iTunes. Do so, it'll prompt you, and then you can follow the on-screen instructions as well. Let's go and choose Move Data from Android. And this is if you've got an Android phone, it will ask you to download the Move to iOS app to get started. Once you do that, press continue, it'll ask you to enter this code on the Move to iOS app, and then you follow the on-screen instructions from there as well. We're gonna show you how to set up as a new iPhone. If you don't wanna restore any data, whether it's from your old iPhone, your Android phone, or any more, or you've just never had an iPhone before. 
First thing to do is ask you to sign in with an Apple ID. Now, if you don't have an Apple ID, you, this is a chance to create one. You just choose don't have an Apple ID or forgot it. If you can't remember the details, you choose forgot Apple ID or password. You can create a free Apple ID, so tap on that and you go through the steps from here. And ask you for your details. Or you can choose to set up an Apple ID later in the settings. What is an Apple ID? Well, it's really straightforward. It's, it's essentially the account that links all of Apple's services together, whether it's on your iPhone, your iPad, your Mac, and you'll need it for several services you wanna use within the iPhone as well, specifically downloading apps. We're gonna go back and enter the existing one. So now you enter your existing Apple ID and password and then tap next in the right hand corner. And now it says it'll take a few minutes to set up your Apple ID. Once set up, you need to agree to the terms and conditions. And again, you go through the initial, the continuing setting up of your Apple ID. Now, if you've already got an Apple ID, it will say, do you want to upgrade to iCloud Drive? This is allows you additional storage. But one of the things to note is you'll not be able to access documents currently stored in iCloud on your other devices until they're upgraded to iOS 8, OS X, Yosemite or later. So if you've got an older Apple device and you rely on iCloud to sync documents across, you won't be able to access them if you upgrade to iCloud Drive. iCloud Drive does have a price attached. iCloud Drive does have a price tag attached to it, and you may not find a need for it. So just tap on turn off iCloud Drive or upgrade whichever one you want to do. Now it asks you about Apple Pay, and this is where you can add a credit, debit, or store card and use Apple Pay with your Touch ID or your Apple Watch to make basically make purchases easily from your right from your iPhone. Tap next. I already have a card on file and it asked me to enter a security code. And you can, at this point, you can either set up later in wallet, add a different credit or debit card, or if you don't have one already attached, it will ask you to add a card. Once you've entered the code, such as the CV2, etc., it may ask you to verify with your bank, so you'll need to follow any on-screen instructions from there. Next step is iCloud Keychain. Now, if you have another Apple product, you may find that you've got passwords, etc., that have been synced on and saved on your other device. You're basically, this is your choose, if you want to be able to use those passwords here on this iPhone, you can either approve it from another device, use your iCloud security code if you can remember it, or don't restore passwords. Most people will want to restore them. I tend to click approve from another device because it's usually the easiest. Here you'll see it says an approval request has been sent. And essentially, you, it's really straightforward on your other device. Click on the notification and follow the on-screen instructions from there. Now we can set up Siri. Essentially, Siri is Apple's voice assistant. You can either turn it on later, or if you want to set it up Siri, just tap on it now. Here it's asked you to say, hey Siri, into the iPhone. It's done it once. And again, hey Siri. And a third time, hey Siri. Now it'll ask you to say a little bit more of a bigger phrase. Hey Siri, how's the weather today? Hey Siri, it's me. And that's it, Siri is ready. And unlike previous iPhones, and that's it, Siri is ready. And unlike previous versions, Hey Siri works when it's both on charge and when it's not, as well as via mobile or Wi-Fi data. Next step, diagnostics. Now you can choose whether you want to send information to Apple. I tend not to send it to anyone and we don't quite know what's being sent. So I tend to recommend that you don't send, but if you want to, because they say they can use it to make your iPhone experience better, you can always click send to Apple. Now, one of the biggest changes in the new iPhone 7 is the new home button, which is now no longer a physical one, but uses haptic feedback. You can, this is where you can customize it. You can also do it later in the settings, but we might as well click get started. And what it allows you to do here is select one of three different vibrations. So one is the softest of the all, three is the heaviest, and two somewhere in the middle. Out of all these three, I must say I prefer the one. Once you've done that, then click next. And now you have the option for display zoom, a feature that's new to the last couple of versions of iOS. Essentially, if you prefer larger icons on the screen because you've got difficulty with eyesight, you can choose a zoomed view. Otherwise, the standard one allows you to customize and add more. Let's tap choose a view. As you can see, the standard one is relatively normal. Zoomed is quite is much better if you have, say, difficulties of sight. 
And again, you can see the differences as you go through, say, the messages. This is in the Zoom view. This is in the standard view. And again, in the email, in the standard view and in the Zoom view. Whichever one you prefer, I prefer standard, but it's entirely up to you. Choose it and then tap on next. And that's it. You've now set up your new iPhone 7 or 7 Plus. And a couple of these settings aside, this can actually be applied to most iPhones and actual other Apple products. Tap on get started and you're taken to the home screen. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out tabtimes.com for even more how-to guides and more on the new iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, as well as everything else you need to know about Apple and beyond. Stay tuned to Tab Times on YouTube. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Like this video if we managed to help you and tell us what you think of the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus in the comments below. And stay tuned because we're Tab Times. All tech, all the time.